So we are busy with the last part of the series on the blood of Jesus. We're still going to talk on this a few more Tuesday mornings. But this morning I want to read for you from Psalm 22, verse 14. It says, I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted with me. We see the heart of Jesus that was broken during this uh, crucifixion experience. And we see that he gave up everything so that you and I can have everything. And when we look at the word of God from Genesis right to the end, everything points to this one this one event. And this is a crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus. And when we look in the New Testament, everything points back to one event. And this is Jesus dying on the cross for us and being raised from the dead. And you know, he gave us once again everything so that we can give everything, that we can have everything and give everything. And this means that allows us to have the fullness of the character of Christ within us, his divine nature. And this happens when you and I become children of God. John 1 verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. So he comes and he transforms our lives. And now we have a right to partake of his divine nature. So you can try to modify your behavior. But you know what? Your behavior is not going to change anything or your heart even. And, and you try for a while and before you know you're back into the old behavior again. But when your heart changes, everything in your life changes. So we are looking at why some people, when they receive Jesus Christ, why they don't um, display this character of Christ. And because the reason is that they have not applied the blood of Jesus. Although they have received Christ, they are not walking in the character because they have a wounded heart. And because of the lack of the ability to process that wound, it brings them to a place where, you know, sometimes you just press a button and they explode. They lose their temper. They become discouraged. Maybe because of past experiences of rejection, of abandonment, unwanted pregnancy, your parents didn't want you, or parents that were divorced or that left you, or something that happened to you at the age of 5 or 10 that you can't process, or, you know, it's things that has been spoken over your life that you're always a problem one, you will never make it, or your teachers, your parents, your grandparents, um, you know, someone that was significant within your life teasing you, someone mocking you about your ears or whatever the case may be coming out of that place even in our, in our nation you know where it's got to do with our skin color it's too large you're too dark you're too black you're too white you're too rich or you're too poor you've got an education or no education you've got a car of no car and now what has happened something has marked your heart and you've got a wound and here is the thing hurting people hurt people you know, even if it's not on purpose, if you wound it, you wound other people. Why? Because it's all about you. It's about you. You're hurting others because you are focusing on yourself and you haven't dealt with that yet and you haven't received healing yet. But here is the thing. Jesus was rejected so that you and I can receive that healing and that acceptance that our hearts can be healed and God can change you and out of that can come a new character and a restored heart again. And this is why when we talk about our heart, we talk about soil and we talk about seed that has been planted in the soil. So when your soil is tainted, when your heart is wounded, what happens? No matter what seed anybody gives you, it might be the sermon of your pastor, it might be your wife, your husband, your children, anybody, whatever seed they are sowing in your life, you will receive it in a tainted way. Because even if the seed is good, if, if the, the heart is tainted, the result will be that that fruit will, that it will bring forth will be tainted as well. So it doesn't matter what people say. You always misinterpret what people say because of your perspective from a tainted and from a wounded heart. And that means everything you touch is tainted. Your family, your finances, your workplace, your progress, your marriage, your children, everything is tainted. But I've got good news for you today. God can change and restore your heart and He can do it today. So 1 Timothy 1 verse 5 says, The purpose of my instruction is that all believers will be filled with love that comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and a genuine faith. So it says, whenever I speak to anyone, whenever I give instruction to anyone, I don't have an alternative agenda. It is not for money. It is not for acceptance. It's not for approval. It is the reason that I speak to people, that I'm showing people, is the motive, the intention is love. 
love from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and a genuine faith. Uh, Ephesians 3 verse 17 says that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. Because we cannot have the love without having Christ. We have the love of Christ, we need Christ. Being rooted and grounded in what? In love. Verse 18, that we may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. So when you know His love, you're filled with His fullness. Not that I will be an ex famous person or get more money or no other agenda, but love from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and a genuine faith. But now the Word of God has given us the fruit of the Spirit, and we can use this to test our hearts to see where we are at. Because if the heart changes, the behavior changes. But you can try to change your behavior. Um, it's not that easy to just change your behavior without having a heart that is changed. And now Galatians come in Galatians 5 verse 22. We read, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And again, such is there is no law. So the fruit, in other words, the result, of the product of the Holy Spirit within your love. So once again, when we talk about character, we talk about this love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So, what is your character linked to? In other words, what is your joy linked to? Maybe it's linked to your new car. Now you get a one scrape on the car and your joy is gone. Uh, so what happens if there's a lack of love, if there's a lack of joy? So if you don't have peace in your heart, you are lacking character. If there's no patience, you're lacking character. And you know, here is the thing. You can be raging on the inside, but on the outside, look quiet and say, you know, I wanted to really give it to the guy, but oh, I had self-control. No, you did not have self-control because within you, you lost control. You were raging within you. So this is still a lack of character. And now in verse 19 of Galatians 5 explains to us about the works of the flesh because we struggle with this. And he starts and he says, now the work of the flesh are evident. So if you look at certain people's behavior, you can see that there's an emptiness on the inside because it says that it is evident. You can see there's a loneliness, there's a lack on the inside. It says, now the works of the flesh are evident. These are people uh, that are, are having a wounded heart. It says, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, which means an insatiable desire for pleasure, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, which is wild parties and overindulgence, no matter how. And the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also did in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And we say, you know, this makes you a good person and this makes you a bad person. No, this makes you a wounded person. That is why you need to do what you do. You are wounded, you're a hurt person, you're a lonely person, you're a struggling person. And there is an emptiness on the inside of you, there's a brokenness on the inside of you, there's a woundedness within your heart, there's a lack of character because there is tainted ground, a wounded heart, there's bad soil that taints everything that goes through it. You are looking at life through blurred glasses because of the guilt and the discouragement and the self-pity that you are living in. And everything in your life is geared towards the self. But now he says, no, you've got to understand today that God wants to bless you in your life. God wants to bless you in your finances, in your workplace, in your marriage, in the progress you're making, in your family. But now here is the thing. God cannot come and take you where your character cannot sustain you. So God wants to do good things, but he's not going to do it if, if something uh, that he's going to give you is actually going to hurt you. It's the same like a bread now. It's a very good thing. You're cutting bread with it. But giving it to a two-year-old is a dangerous. It's not a good thing. So the same is God wants to bless you. God wants to promote you. God wants to take you to a new level of authority within your life. He wants you to take to that new level. But if you don't have the character to sustain you there, he can't take you there. And this is why many times we get tested in our lives. You know, when you don't get the promotion, how do you react? You know, um, going crazy as if God didn't know you're not going to get it. And God is testing your heart. 
see are you gonna go off and take 20 yes you still sit in the same position why because you haven't forgiven the other person you haven't helped the other person when they got promoted you didn't work with them but you were completely negative your real character came through someone owes you money in your business 20 years later you're still struggling why because you're still looking for that money that is still not realizing that if you let it go god can bless you with so much more and he can give you new money new things in your life to bless you with but now your character is tainted your heart is tainted everything you see through blurred eyes and god cannot give you that promotion because your heart is not right, your character is not right, you will not deal with it. And sometimes God works hard to give you something and you just destroy it in one moment because of that lack of character within your life. And now we've got to understand that the fruit, it doesn't say the fruits of the Spirit, it says the fruit. All of these that we've mentioned, the love, joy, peace, um, self-control, calmness, all of them, they all grow simultaneously at the same time within you. You can't come and say, you know, I have love, but I don't have patience. You can't have the one without the other. If you don't have patience, you don't have love. You can't come and say, I have joy, but I have no self-control. If you don't have character, if you don't have the one, you can't have the other. But now, what is a remedy? What do we do to change our hearts? And here Psalm 51 comes and he says, have mercy upon me, O God. He doesn't say, well, Lord, you know, I deserve this. You know, this is my right. This is no... Lord, have mercy on me. Throws himself at the love and at the mercy of God. Verse 2. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions. He doesn't say, no, that's my granny's fault. That's my business partner's fault. You know, it's, uh, I was abused or this happened to me or, or they did me in. No. He took responsibility for his own heart. He was not blaming anybody else for the condition of his heart. And this is what we need to do. You can't blame others for the condition of your heart. Verse 3. I acknowledge my transgressions. And my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. Verse 10. Create in me a clean heart of God. So it is the heart that changes the behavior. Verse 10. Create in me a clean heart of God and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Steadfastness, a consistency in my life that I will walk in a consistent love, in a consistent joy, in a consistent self-control. Verse 11. Do not cast me away from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Why does he pray that? Because you know it is the Holy Spirit that produces this character within your life that produces this fruit within our lives verse 12 restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit the joy of my salvation now you can say joy because your joy is not linked to external factors anymore but it is linked to the fact that you are a child of god verse 12 and uphold me by your generous spirit 13 then i will teach transgressions your way and sinners shall be converted to you. So when you have that heart, what happens? You automatically become a soul winner. You automatically become a person that speak life into other people's lives, that make an impact in other people's lives, that empower their lives. And once again, what is our purpose? What is our objective for our instruction, our objective for our conversation to every person and every place, anywhere? And it is love. Love from a pure heart, clear conscience and a genuine faith see there's no hustling there's no no agenda and now see now god can take you now where the character of god can sustain you and this morning maybe you sit here and you're listening to the word of god and maybe you've got a wounded heart but you don't understand you get angry you've got sadness within you anger within you you, uh, you can't even know why, you can't even say why it is, but you're depressed, you're, you're, uh, you overact, and you can't understand the behavior that you have within your life. But it is because you have a wounded heart. This morning we're going to get to God, and we're going to pray together, and we're going to plead the blood of Jesus over our lives, and we're going to accept what God has done for us by faith, and start experiencing His healing within our lives. Are you ready to pray with me? So I just want you to start off this prayer and pray with me. Where you are, repeat after me. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me, Lord. Wash me thoroughly from all my sin and cleanse me 
I acknowledge my sin. Create within me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your spirit. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me and restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Lord, today I apply the blood of Jesus that was shed from your side. And I declare that the power of your blood replaces my character for the fruit of your spirit. Thank you, Lord, that your blood removes all fear and has given me perfect love, exchanging my bitterness for joy, my worry for patience, my ungodliness for kindness, my evil for goodness, my doubt for your faithfulness, my rebellion for your humility, my lack of self-restraint for self-control. I praise you, Lord, that your spirit produces the right fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, that I have a restored heart. You are a good God, and I praise you for that. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Receive your restoration, and now walk in this healing this week that God has given you. God bless you.